Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. Following my recent expose of Michael Mann's stunning incompetence, he's lashed out on Twitter. This was my tweet which started his rampage. I showed how he started his heat wave trends right at the coolest period of the last century and hit all of the hot temperatures prior to that. It is difficult to imagine a scientist being this dishonest, but that's exactly what Michael Mann was doing. So rather than admitting his error, correcting his graph, and retracting the ridiculous claims he made, he went on a Twitter rampage. Tired of climate change deniers like Steve Goddard, who are so ashamed of their fibs and their misrepresentations of science and scientists that they hide their true identities. And then he linked to a parody site to show why people shouldn't listen to me. I'm not a bit surprised that Michael Mann gets his science from parody sites, because his hockey stick is a parody of reality. Michael Mann has me blocked, and it's against Twitter's terms of use for him to attack someone who he has blocked. But had he been able to actually look at my tweet, he would have known that I tweet under my real name. I also blog under my real name and make my YouTube videos under my real name. Steve S. Goddard is a pen name from a dozen years ago when I was working for a green company which would have fired me if they would have known what I was blogging about climate. Then Mann went on with his Twitter rampage. Many in these comment threads are fake identities created by corporate and state-sponsored, i.e. Russian troll farms. Others are just truly horrible people. Racism, misogyny, all-round maliciousness, and climate change denial just seem to go together. So the reason he's doing junk climate science is because of Russian trolls and bots. This sort of Twitter rampage is a common theme from Michael Mann. Here's when he went on last year. We're not nearing a constitutional crisis. We're there. Our nation is under assault by a dangerous coalition of hostile interests and enablers. Trump, Russia, Putin, Kelly, Nunes, Ryan. We must defend our nation by any means available. And here's a good one. The Republican Party is conspiring with Russia to attack America. Michael Mann appears to be delusional, which is why the Democrats always use him as an expert witness in their climate hearings. Then he came up with a new list of excuses for his followers not to pay attention to people exposing his malfeasance. All of the noise right now from the climate change denial machine, the bots and trolls, the calls for fake debates, etc. Ignore it all. Deniers are desperate for oxygen in a mainstream media environment that thankfully is no longer giving it to them. Report. Block. Don't engage. History shows that people engaging in the big lie always avoid debate and always rely on censorship. Michael Mann is invoking all of the most undemocratic themes from the past. And now he seems to have settled in on a theme of trying to get me banned. In his next tweet, he was grossly misrepresenting some legitimate and important questions I asked after the Sandy Hook massacre. Anything to avoid discussing his scientific malfeasance. He's trying to link me here to Alex Jones. This is a ploy to get me banned like Alex Jones was. But I don't have anything to do with Alex Jones and I was asking perfectly legitimate questions about the Sandy Hook massacre. To make sure the record is straight, I'm going to go over what the questions were that I asked. I used to work in Sandy Hook, Connecticut and I rode my bicycle right past the school on my way to the office. Obviously I knew people there and believe that they deserve to know the full story of what happened that day. This was an article which appeared in the local newspaper a few days after the shooting. The Newtown B, Thursday, December 27, 2012. A man with a gun who was spotted in the woods near the school on the day of the incident was an off-duty tactical squad police officer from another town. I was watching the coverage that day and saw the armed SWAT team member being arrested and carried off in a police car. He was wearing camouflage, and this immediately raised all kinds of questions. There was no reason for him to be there, as I'll show you in a minute. It was illegal for him to be there armed, and had he been there armed outside the school during the shooting, why didn't he intervene? That's the most important question. This is an aerial view of the school. This is Interstate 84. This is the section of woods where he was arrested, and this is where I rode my bicycle on my way to work. This is the small section of woods where the armed SWAT team member wearing camouflage was arrested. There's no reason for him to be there. There's no hiking trails there, there's no hunting there, and it's right next to the school. 
it was illegal for him to have a gun there. What was an armed SWAT team member from another town doing there? And rifles are extremely loud. There's no way he wouldn't have heard the shooting. If he's out there armed, why didn't he attempt to intervene in the shooting? These are very important questions, and the people I used to work with at Sandy Hook deserve to know the answers to them. This is the blog post which I wrote in 2013, which Michael Mann is attempting to misrepresent. The blog post was titled, So What Really Happened at Sandy Hook? And I quoted a newspaper article, Sandy Hook DA Cites Potential Suspects, Fears Witness Safety. Connecticut State's attorney Stephen Sudensky has argued that unsealing warrants in the Sandy Hook case might seriously jeopardize the investigation by disclosing information known only to other potential suspects. So the Connecticut State Attorney clearly believed that there were potentially other people involved. And then there was the article from the Newtown Bee. A man with a gun who was spotted in the woods near the school on the day of the incident was an off-duty tactical squad police officer from another town. And then another article, Police Scanner. A teacher saw two shadows running past the building, past the gym. So Michael Mann calls asking legitimate questions about his junk science and about what happened at Sandy Hook as being evil in its purest form. I live in Boulder, Colorado, where 20 years ago many progressives had bumper stickers on their car which said, Question Authority. But now many progressives seem to believe that questioning authority is illegal. Albert Einstein said, Blind trust in authority is the greatest enemy of the truth. Michael Mann shows many signs of being a very disturbed individual, and I certainly will not stop questioning his junk science in the future. The great American physicist, Nobel Prize winner Richard Feynman said, If they say to you, science has shown such and such, you might ask, How does science show it? How did the scientists find out? How, what, where? Please feel free to post this video on Michael Mann's Twitter page. I can't do it because I'm blocked. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.